Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Paul, AKA Powerhouse 21. As I pursue my quest for the best internet connection in this room, Nexus Link reached out and asked if I wanted to test out one of their new pieces of equipment. And of course I said yes. I have the GCA 6000 coax ethernet adapter. It pulls in a really nice solid 600 megabits per second. Of course, people out there will say that's not gigabit and I get that but it's still over coax. So I think that's a really good thing. However, it could be faster. The internet here is right between 300 to 350 megabit per second. So that covers that, that's not a problem. Plus to play games or do anything other than file transfers, you don't really need a super fast connection to watch Netflix or play Call of Duty on an Xbox. You don't need 350 megabit per second connections. So some of these items may actually work for you. So let's go ahead and check out the Nexus Link WB1750 Wireless Gaming Bridge. So this kit comes with two of the base units two power supplies, and two ethernet cables. It comes with a quick start guide, and that's pretty much it for the box. On the front, there are status LEDs. On the back, you have your mode switch. This switches each of the units into either access point mode or station mode. Access point, of course, is the give, and the station mode is receive. The instructions do say to use the WPS button to quickly sync the units, so that's exactly what I did to get up and running nice and quickly. There are two ethernet ports on the back of this. For the access point, I just hooked up one. For the station, however, I went ahead and actually attached one, and a little bit later, I'm gonna attach two just to see what the connectivity is with both populated. You also have your on-off switch and your power. The box says it uses AC wireless 4x4 MIMO. MIMO is multi-input, multi-output. It basically means that there's four antennas for four simultaneous data streams, and then it also also includes a technology called MU-MIMO, which is multi-user, multi-input, multi-output, which ends up being that you can have multiple connections on the unit itself and be sending and receiving in simultaneous streams, which basically just makes it go faster. On the box, it does have a theoretical max speed of 1733 megabits per second. So let's see what the WB1750 wireless gaming bridge can do. Let's check it out. All right, so I've gone through testing. It must have been about three seconds for you, but it did take me a little bit of time to pick up and move everything that I was testing around the house because I did do a couple other things as well. So let's go ahead and get on to the stats. On the test laptop, on Wi-Fi, in the office, it was 221 megabits per second, just using speed test. It doesn't really matter if it's not hitting that 350 megabit internet connection max anyway, that's gonna tell me that it's gonna max out at 221. On the test laptop on the WD1750 bridge, at six feet apart, it was 347 megabits per second, so it's definitely an improvement. The test laptop on Wi-Fi in the studio, which is this room right here, hit right around 150 megabit per second. The test laptop on the wireless bridge in the studio was 356 megabit per second. That was absolutely amazing. The desktop, the one that's behind me here that does my data transfers from here to the server over the network, currently does 600 megabits per second over the GCA 6000, which is the coax to ethernet adapter. That video you can check out right here, right here, right here, right, it's gonna be somewhere. So hooked up to the wireless bridge, I hit 359 megabit per second. It was absolutely amazing. And uh, I did do a file transfer of a four gigabyte video file. It came in right around 500 megabit down. And then when I tried to send it back, it was right around 375 to 400 megabit per second. It actually is not too bad, but it does fall a little short of the 600 megabit that I'm getting with the coax to ethernet adapter. I did also take it to other spots in the house. In the kitchen, it clocked in right around 200 megabits per second, and that's actually one floor down and across the entire house. I also did the basement, which is two floors down from here and all the way across the house. And I was hitting right around 125 to 130 megabit per second. I did try both ethernet jacks on the back, one with the desktop and one with the laptop. Everything worked out fine, so you wouldn't have any issues there. The bottom line, it is a great unit. You can use it for gaming, entertainment, whatever you want. 
want, light file transfers, things like that. And honestly, like I said before, you don't need 300 megabit to play Call of Duty on an Xbox or watch Netflix on a smart TV. You just don't need that bandwidth. So the fact that you could get at least 135, 150 megabit per second would do just fine if you had this hooked up to any of your devices. If you need more than two ethernet jacks, just hook up one of the five port gigabit switches that's out there. So would I recommend this? Absolutely. It is something that I feel that a lot of people would get a lot of use out of, specifically people that don't have ethernet jacks built into the walls around their house, or just the fact that they wanna do some gaming or something like that, and don't have a long enough ethernet cable or something you'd have to drape across the floor. It's just unneeded when you have devices like this. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Nexus Link for making this video possible. And honestly, if you wanna find any of their equipment, nexuslink.com. Check it out. If you like this video and like content like this, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing and hit that little bell because there's a lot more content coming out. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. But if you did like it, like I said, give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.